of where were you at the time of the incident? What did you see while there? How would you uh, explain what you saw? General questions that you're going to get a narrative out of the witness. A narrative. You're not going to be getting just a yes or no answer. Now, for each witness, the plaintiff will finish his questions, sit down, and then the defense will have the opportunity to cross-examine the witness. And this is usually the fun part of the trial. This is where the attorney who is doing the cross-examination knows exactly what he wants to get out of uh, the cross-examination. It is more like the attorney testifying than it is the witness testifying. A good attorney who is doing a good cross-examination has a story in his head and is going to use yes or no types of questions to confirm that story. So you might hear, and these are, these are leading questions, you might hear, uh, you were at the scene of the incident, weren't you? Yes. Isn't it true that you were looking at the store when the incident happened? Yes. Isn't it true that the store is facing the opposite direction of the incident? Well, yeah, that, that is true. Well, isn't it true that you only turned around once you heard the sound? Well, kind of, I get. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm actually building a story that the person was looking in the opposite direction and couldn't have possibly seen the incident. I am making this story as the cross-examiner to ensure that the jury is going to paint a picture, is going to have a picture, a mental picture in their head of, oh, well, how, how can she be a reliable witness if she wasn't even looking at the incident when it happened? She might have seen some of the after effects, but uh, she seemed to be testifying on direct that she knew exactly what happened. But after listening to the cross-examination, the story that the attorney was putting forth, but it looks as if the witness is testifying to it, uh, says that the witness can't be relied on because uh, the witness wasn't even looking at the incident when it happened. So cross-examination is very important. The leading questions are allowed because it's considered that the witness is hostile to uh, the defense's case. And it provides a good attorney a great opportunity uh, to change how the jury perceives what has happened and to poke holes in uh, the narrative that the witness gave at the, uh, during the direct. Now, after the cross-exam, the plaintiff, the party's witness, the party whose witness it is, will have the opportunity to do redirect. And on redirect, the uh, that party is going to have to try to resuscitate whatever damage was uh, uh, the injuries done to the witness through the cross. At each point of this, it's worth noting, the subject matters get smaller and smaller and smaller. What's discussed during direct is pretty broad. What's expressed during cross is even, is, is narrower, and it has to pertain to what was talked about in direct. In redirect, it's even smaller. It has to be something that was discussed in cross, in general. So, the plaintiff might ask, um, to the witness that we were just talking about, how did you know what you saw? And the witness might respond, well, the store has 
uh, glass which reflects really easily and I was able to see the two cars coming together and what you saw in the glass was that what happened or what you explained in your testimony yes that's exactly what happened the further down you go on this the less leading questions will be that big of a deal uh, but you can see how in redirect uh, the attorney for the other side tried during cross to make this story that she couldn't have possibly known what was going <coughs> what was going on uh, but then during redirect the plaintiff may try to change it yet again to say, well, the, the other attorney was leaving out the big fact that she could see the glass which reflected the, uh, the light. Now, after a redirect, there's recross. And again, talking about even less of, uh, even less of a range of topics that can be discussed. And it's the same sort of principle where you're trying to uh, fix whatever damage has been done. You know, the in this case, the defense attorney maybe should have expected this to happen. He, he should have already had a picture through the paralegal's research and through his own research and may actually know that the son at the time was right behind her. So she might, the, the attorney might say, the son was right behind you, wasn't it? Uh, I don't remember where the son was. Remember during evidence we talked about uh, judicial notice, notice that can be taken that is fact, that there is no dispute. So the attorney at that point may request to enter evidence as to where the sun was shining at that particular moment that's been uh, talked about. You know, it was nine o'clock in the morning, wasn't it? Yeah, it was almost exactly nine o'clock. I remember looking at my watch. Okay. At this time, I would like to enter into evidence Exhibit 5 and request that judicial notice be taken of the uh, location of the sun during that time as it relates to the building. And here's a diagram of where that is. The attorney for the other side would likely object for some reason or another, but would probably be overruled. This would provide the jury with a great view of, well, where the sun was. The, uh, the attorney then would say, do you see Exhibit 5? Yes. The sun is located right behind you if you put yourself in the, in the position where you were at the time of the incident. Yes. Isn't it true that you couldn't have seen the vehicles behind you because the sun would have been shining right into the glass? Uh, yeah, uh, well, it might have been cloudy that day. So evidence at that point may be entered into regarding the uh, cloudiness or whether the, the sky was clear, that sort of thing. So you can see the progression here the point is to try to show the facts to the jury and have the jury come to some conclusion based on these, these opposing sides coming at each other in differing ways. This will go on for each witness. And then finally, the plaintiff will rest. At that point, the defense will request a motion 
for directed